morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Getting ready for a retirement ceremony this afternoon. So, how am I celebrating that? By seasoning up some ribs, of course. Some nice St. Louis cut ribs. And so I can feed my family that came out here. You know, it's a wonderful thing to be able to fellowship with your friends and family, but even more so when they come to, they travel great distances to share in a pivotal moment in your life, like say retirement. Hey Mike, what's happening brother? I can't wait. It's about, uh, as it stands, it's about eight hours from now. But I can't sit still that long. See, I done fired up Walter Hill. And uh, it's rolling smoke right now. So, since that's going on, I might as well go ahead and get these, get these ribs seasoned up. Everybody else, I imagine, is recovering from last night's, uh, festivities, you know, a little, nothing wrong with a little, uh, little sipping and reminiscing, but me, I, I couldn't sleep like that, and then also I got people from other countries messaging me and wanting, requesting to FaceTime with me. Yeah, I wish you could have would have, could have kind of run. That would have been awesome. But it's all good. We we'll ought to be together in spirit. Roro, what's bimp? What does that mean? I've been wanting to ask you that. these membranes off of these ribs. And I'll go ahead and season them up properly because, you know, that's the only way I do it. Smoke is uh, rolling high already. And uh, I'm excited about that. Temperature's gonna be low on that smoker. Really excited about that. So you know what that means. Low and slow equals real barbecue. Film the food, not you. <laughs> okay. Hold on a second. I see. You. So, uh, I hope that's better, Mike. So anyway, so as I am um, trimming this this a membrane off, I get the blade next to the bone. Okay, and basically pushing the blade on the bone directly, slide it down, and kind of get that separation between it and the rib, and just flick of the wrist, push upwards, it'll pull up that fat and that membrane. What this does for you is, it makes sure that the, the seasoning that you put on there goes all the way to the bone, you know. You're not wasting seasoning on a layer of fat or a membrane that it's not going to penetrate. You know, because a lot of people do that. I used to do that when I didn't know what I was doing. But see, 
and it kind of just peels right back, that membrane does, okay? And then once I get all the way down here to the mid part of the, the uh, slab, you know, I got it where it's all pulled back. And then the knife flew out of my hand. You'll have some tension in there, some, you know, where it doesn't want to do it all the way, but that's all right. You have to stick with it. Uh, smoke level getting high. Okay. That temperature getting up there too, which is good. It's getting up to smoking temperature. Now Walter L, my smoker, is my own personal design. You see, it's a cabinet smoker I made out of a, a former weapons cabinet quarter-inch thick steel, and uh, my brother's over at uh, EMC company, you know, engineering and maintenance company, they, they uh, did that welding for me, so shout out to them, and because of them, my dream as far as my equipment and everything became a reality, and I'll be uh, eternally grateful for that. But when I begin to take over, they will have played a very vital role in it for anybody that was curious. So, so you want to get to where now you can see the meat underneath here. So I put in the seasoning and the marinade, it's going to be in there. So that's cool. Uh, hold on a second. Apparently he's up. And then, so that'll be some ribs that you're not gonna waste any flavor on those. Especially they got a lot of fat from the membrane area. Couldn't sleep, little bro. I had to get to work. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. One of my partners was hitting me up from um, Japan and everything as if they don't know what time it is here. So at 5 in the morning, cats was messaging me and, and all this. So I'm like, oh, what the hell? Hold on a second. Yeah, Walter Hill is rolling smoke. It's up to two, about two, two, uh, twenty-five. Two, actually, about two thirty. That's real good to go. Got that apple wood in there. Well, yeah, I understand, man. You, you know, you got a reputation to hold on to out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you know, I know. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that Georgia flavor. You know, it's all good though. Nah, it's all right. Now nah, let's get this up so it'll be going by the time y'all get here. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday yeah. I fell off because I was so busy with all the social interaction, you know, with the family reunion side of the game. Otherwise, it would have been crap, cracking the whole lot. But, but <laughs> he's gonna get complete recovery and get it in. Talking about you, my body's still on Georgia time. It's, it's ten o'clock. <laughs> I'm seeing all this sun peeking through the blinds. I'm like, man, it's gotta be late. About nine, ten, it's six thirty. Yeah. Yeah, ain't nothing. I mean, I was like, you know, I was sleeping all right, I guess, but I just, and it wasn't even that excitement about the day. It's just I was just freaking. I had to get out. I couldn't go back to sleep. Hey, you know uh, Albert Rayford? Albert Rayford? Yeah, he went to, uh, I think he went to He's from Peoria. He out here. He up in the Bay Area. He got a joint called Fat Daddy's. He up there doing it. I don't know. The name don't sound for me. Yeah, if you saw him, you probably... He about to age. Thank you. 
seasoning and marinade activity which is at this stage I think the most pivotal because you get the flavor in there you know what I mean so once we got once we got the membrane off y'all can see me pulling that up there right now then like trim back that this one has a little fat in the membrane so with a nice sharp knife like this, um, you go ahead and you can pull it back and trim that fat back as well. There's this. Actually, I will uh, do the seasoning recipe. Um, once I get the, uh, I got a catalog the ingredients for the rub and everything. So, for dog on, um, uh, you know, for the purposes of the ingredients on the uh, on the uh, doggone container. But once I get that together, yes, I will be packaging it up and likely selling it. But I got a partner out here. His name is uh, Diallo Sullivan, and he got this thing called Sully Seasonings. I think it's on Amazon or will be soon, but it's off the hook. It's, uh, I have something in my car. If I had, I would do the little shout out thing. Ooh, son. Let me show y'all something real quick. Wait a minute. Yeah. Look at that. Let me turn this around real quick. Look at Walter L. Look at him. Ooh. That smoke is rolling. Okay, look at that. Yeah, Sully Seasoning is the name of it. Trying to put that out there for people all across the country. They can order it, you know what I'm saying? He'll ship it to you. It's like $11 or something like that right now. Obviously, it's going to be just the price point down the road, but it's well worth it. You put it on everything from salad to all types of things. 
Yeah, Angela Lewis, it fits, but it's kind of young. I got, you know, a little bit diesel, a little bit plump, so. <laughs> Things change. Yeah, he's a retired Marine uh, a gunny like me. We're from the same company, actually. And he got a whole lot of hustles, but that's one that's taken off recently is the Sully Seasons. He also has, like, a mobile mechanic joint. Sully's mobile mechanic. And, I, and, and I, this logo, his logo for the season was an offshoot of his logo from his uh, mobile mechanic. So the dude is nice. Ah. Full disclosure, Angela Lewis, this shirt was given to me as a gift from um, from uh, people at the high school when I got back from my, um, when I came back to visit after my uh, 20 year high school reunion. So it's, it's more recent than it seems. So it is not from high school, it's just of the high school. Okay, I think the last one here. Yeah, got one last one. I don't need to tell any of you the importance of this uh, glove situation, you know. But as you're preparing all this, I prepare all my meats. You know, obviously, I want to make sure I'm doing it nice and healthy per the food code regulations. But also, um, you know, you don't want to do any, be involved in any cross-contamination and thing like that. You know, because most of the foodborne illnesses are transferred, basically, from us, you know, and, and through our environment out there. And then unprotected, you know. You bring that stuff to a food that already has bacteria and stuff in it. So these are, unfortunately, Michael, these are beef, pork ribs. I do beef ribs as well, but these are the doggone meat of the day. If you're going to be serious, because a lot of people are old fashioned, they don't pay attention, but you're going to be serious about cooking, doing heavy meats like ribs and, and uh, briskets and things like that. Always make sure that you have gloves and that you have a situation where you can re even regularly clean your hands and change out gloves. It will go a long way to keeping people safe. If they're eating your food, if you have an establishment, Keep yourself up the cold and out of jail, you know. See, I'm getting up under there. Using this, this uh, kind of. Ooh, there you go. Come on. Movement right there. I'm kind of using it like a lever. Cut through this fat under this. Because some of these, the fat on there underneath the membrane was pretty thick. But as I do that, as I do a kind of a brushing motion with the blade, it cuts just enough under the membrane to make the fat come loose and all this and that. So it's all good. So what's going on right now is Walter L is starting to get to the point at which the temperature is going to settle. Okay. So it'll get in the barbecue range as far as a smoking temperature. And it, uh, you know, obviously it's gonna get really hot once I first get the coals going and get the smoke to rolling. But what ends up happening is the temperature will settle in a certain range, which is about like 280, which is where I want it. I'm not gonna put it on the top because that's where the highest is. I have two thermometers on the side. I only show you the one at the top. What it does is it's heat zones, okay? So certain meats that need to be cooked at a higher temperature, your chicken and things like that. I would, I would smoke a lot of that up at the top but I wouldn't have the meat stacked to where I got pork or anything on the chicken because the drippings from that is unhealthy. You don't want Uncle Sal to come visit you, you know, salmonella. So you don't put chicken over anything else. But what I do is I put, uh, I, I usually do my meats in similar groups, you know. So if I'm doing brisket, it's gonna be all beef in there. You know, if I'm doing pork uh, ribs and pork shoulders, it's basically gonna be all pork in there. And that helps that to make sure it's consistent. The composition of the meat is the same, and also I don't have to worry about the 
the concerns that come with different meats, you know, trichinosis with pork or salmonella with chicken or whatever and this and that. And also, well, one thing I also didn't, didn't mention is with the gloves in this area right here, you put yourself in a situation where you don't have any, any of these blood-borne um, contaminants that you have. Like my buddy, uh, Albert Rafer told me, I grabbed a paper towel and pulled back on the membrane and it comes right off. So once you've done your due diligence getting up underneath there and getting that fat, it pulls right off like a candy wrapper. <laughs> so, so we have one, two, yes, Michael, the paper towel, you grab the edge of the membrane after you trimmed it back and just pull it and it rips right off. It, it helps so, uh, it's so amazing. And I, I'm glad the brother showed me that. I like I going through all these, uh, it's dry. It's a dry, dry paper towel. Okay, now, I'm on my, oh, oh. okay, now, what I'm doing now is, I almost got my phone caught up, is uh, I'm at my three panel sink, you know, and since I'm not cleaning and disinfecting right now, cleaning, rinsing, cleaning, rinsing, and disinfecting, what I'm doing is, I'm cleaning this meat. So in sink number one, I'm putting these six slabs of ribs, okay? What I usually do is get a tepid water solution. Now, it depends on what kind of time I'm dealing with. If I have a little time on my hands, I'm gonna do, I'm going to do basically bathe this, this uh, meat like three times. The reason why I do this is because at this tepid temperature, it gets the blood flowing from the bones in the meat and out of the tissue of the meat. And I reach in to the, uh, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of this in a second, but I don't wanna get the water on my phone. I'm going to basically gently massage these doggone uh, ribs a bit, water in the water, and just like when you massage, massage, massage a muscle in your body, it increases blood flow, okay? In whatever direction you're doing the massage. Well, when you, uh, yeah, I need a camera crew. See, um, when you massage the, the 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 rib, the meat tissue outwards, it makes that blood flow out. That that blood has been sitting in the um, tissue, makes it flow outward into the water, and then the water will be anywhere from a deep red to a pink, and then once it's like that, I drain it, fill it back up again, and do the same until I get to where I'm doing it with kind of a cold water solution. And once the water is absolutely clear, then you know your meat is clean. What that does for you is make sure that you're not cooking blood. Because a lot of people, you know, a lot of time it's wasted barbecuing and everything because you gotta make sure you got the meat cooked to the point where it's done all the way through, where, it's, where all of the blood is cooked out. You know, the temperature is gonna force the blood to flow outward through the bones and everything else. Now you got some, um, basically, cooked out blood all in the mix, of which I'm not a fan. So that's why I clean all my meats. Because when you're making ribs or any heavy meats, you want for it to be juicy. That juice should be the natural juices, water and stuff that comes out of the tissue of the meat. And it should be infused with the seasoning that you apply to the meat and the marinade that you apply to it. That's what you should be tasting. It shouldn't be gamey and basically it should be kind of like a flavor explosion, if you will, as soon as you take a bite. Because what you put in is what you get out of it. So obviously if there's blood in there, somehow or another that's gonna make its way into the flavor, even if even if it's done. But if you have nothing but the tissue, okay? Because the clean meat tissue, especially the heavy meats, should be gray, grayish. Maybe a dull pink color. That means you got all, of, if it's red, it's, it's, it's cause this is vascularized tissue that has blood in it yet, okay? but it should be grayish pink. And once you got that in effect, then that means you have, you're not worrying about dealing with anything that's carried in the blood or set resting in the meat. Once I got my meat clean and everything, not until I will apply the, the seasoning and everything. And I'm gonna demonstrate real quick. Once I get this done, let's take a minute. Gotta drain this. I just did uh, bath number one. So 
Once we get this uh, sink drained out. I'm telling you, if you're serious as a cook, as a cook, a wannabe chef, all this and the other, I would, I would advise you to get one of these three panel sinks. They are the business. Because you can do so much stuff with them. And it keeps you up to and above the regulations. Okay. So, here we go. There we go. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is my three panel sink, okay? Oops. Can't turn my phone around recording. This is my three panel sink. When I'm doing dishes, wash, rinse, sanitize. Okay, left to right or right to left, whatever. Now, there I'm running, I'm, re I'm refilling this. You see the water is a little bit gray right there. It was a, it was a deep pink, almost a red before. But we've gotten that meat fairly clean. So in this bath right here is um, yeah, it's about seven, seven or eight feet uh, wide. It's in a built-in little cabinet. So I'll show you what I'm working with. I'm blessed to have it. It's uh, got a two-gallon hot water heater under there. Okay, and uh, there's the white one is the uh, fresh water tank, and along the black back, that black thing is the uh, dog on um, the gray water tank, and the pump is back there behind that cleaning solution. So this helps me do processing at home with no issues. You know, so I can take this thing. And uh, when I do my events outside your farmer's markets and things like that, I can go out there and uh, be completely um, self-contained. Yeah, it's custom built, but uh, a guy had, um, a guy who I got it from, he used it in uh, his business. Uh, something changed about his location and the coding, so he had to get rid of it. And I was the beneficiary of it I mean I'm, I'm gonna tell you I looked into this one these things used to go for a couple of grand and I got it um, got it for like seven hundred dollars the thing about it is it is it's sitting on uh, heavy-duty casters so I can roll it around and actually lock the wheels or whatever but um, this would be sitting behind my, in the back side of my tent, and I would turn, you know, I could turn around, freshen up, handle business, you know what I mean? So it's one of those things like that. So it's a great benefit to have. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to step away real quick because I'm about to throw something in the, give me a little trash bin. Go, oh, as you were. I got garbage bags in here. <laughs> So, I can collect up my bags from the rib. Oh, oh, mm. Now, another thing that is vital that you have around your station, if you're working with meats, is a good cleaner with the bleach in it. Because, you know, things will not go well if we don't... Uh, Clean up behind the blood and everything. In case you might get a little spillage here and again, you know, you got to keep yourself and your people safe. So, anytime you're going behind anything like that. Yeah. All right, man. So you go ahead and do your thing. I'm going to keep my mind occupied here. 
and my hands occupied here and get this done. And so I'm gonna go ahead and break right now for anybody that's watching. And once I come finish this bath on these meats, then I'm gonna go through the seasoning process and show you how I go about infusing the flavor in the ribs. So appreciate y'all for watching, but I'm not gonna have y'all uh, sitting there while I just talk for no reason. So God bless y'all, I'll be back shortly.